So we will start our topic 1 by introducing to you the definition of statistics. So what is statistics? Statistics is a science of collecting, organizing, summarizing and interpreting data to help the process of making decisions. Statistics then will be divided into two, where collecting, organizing, summarizing and interpreting data is part of the descriptive statistics. This includes converting raw data into a meaningful form such as graph and data. Making revision is part of the inferential statistics. So in this subject, we just focus on descriptive statistics. Believe it or not, we actually use statistics in our daily life. Statistics is used as simple as calculating the number of steps taken daily, too as complicated as predicting the heart disease. In statistics, data is incorporated in every decision making. Whether it is a simple decision making or a complicated decision making. To help you further understand on the basic concept of statistics, let's meet Ahmad and Nina. They both are a new researcher and they plan to do a research on the impact of working from home on cardiovascular health, assessing the body weight changes and the lifestyle of lecturers in UITM Laku. So where should Ahmad and Nina begin? In research, the first and the most crucial part is you need to define your research objective and your research question. Research objective is your research goal, what you want to achieve at the end of your research. So for Ahmad and Nina, they want to determine the percentage of lecturers who experience with body weight changes during work from home, to explore physical activities does the lecturer engage in order to stay active and lastly to determine the average number of steps taken by the lecturer daily. Research question on the other hand is the question that being created by the researcher in order to uh, achieve the goal. So the research question is specifically related to your research objective. So for Ahmad and Nina, the research question is how many percent of lecturers have experienced body weight changes? What are the physical activities does the lecturer engage in order to stay active? And lastly, what is the average number of steps taken by a lecturer during work from home? So the second uh, most crucial part is you need to define the population. So what is populations? Populations refers to the entire group of individuals about whom you wish to study and draw a conclusion. Your population can be car, students, plan, building or anything. Population can vary in size. You can have a giant and broad population such as all 32.37 million Malaysian citizens or small population such as 100 students taking mathematical program in school. So it is important to carefully and precisely define your target population according to the purpose and practicalities of your research to make sure all the objectives is achieved. Here are some tips on population. To make sure the research is more manageable and to draw more precise conclusions, you could focus on narrower population. That's for Ahmad and Nina, since they plan to study all uh, lecturers in UITM Naka and to date they have 575 lecturers there, thus their population would be all 575 lecturers in UITM Naka. So this means that Ahmad and Nina need to track down every 575 lecturers in UITM Naka to make sure that all of their research questions are being answered. If they be able to meet and ask all the 575 lecturers, this means they are doing census. By definition, census is a survey that is done to the entire individual in your target population. And every measure that have been made based on all the data from the population is called population parameter. But don't you think it will be time consuming, too expensive and require more manpower to track down and meet all of the 575 lecturers? 
For a larger and more dispersed population, it is often difficult or impossible to collect data from every individual. That's why it is necessary to use a sample. So what is sample? Sample is part of the population or a subset of population. It is the group of individuals who will actually participate in the research. If you have a good sample, which means it represents the population in every way, such as age, educational background, and race, thus we can draw a conclusion of a population just by looking on a sample. So if a survey is done uh, and carried out using a sample, it is called a sample survey. And any measurement that uh, taken from uh, sample data is called a sample statistic. So since we are using a sample instead of population, thus we need to determine the right amount of sample size that we will use in order to make sure the sample is representative of our population. There is a few methods that can be used to determine the sample size and one of them is table of Fitch and Morgan in 1970. Fitch and Morgan came up with this table where you can refer uh, the sample size that should be taken based on the amount of the population size. As you can see on screen here, if the Fitch and Morgan table which will be used to determine how many samples should we select from the population. So capital letter N on the first, third and the fifth column here represent the population size while S on the second, fourth and sixth column here represent the minimum uh, sample size. So for Ahmad and Nina, their population size is 575 lecturers. But uh, based on this table, 575 is not included. So the nearest will be a 600 population size. So since we choose 600 uh, as population size and thus our sample size will be 234 uh, lecturers. Based on the table Kriche and Morgan 1970, it has been decided that Ahmad and Nina need to take at least 234 samples from 575 population. So the process of choosing a sample from population is called sampling. So by definition, sampling is a technique of selecting an individual members as a sample to make a conclusion from them uh, for the whole population. So this is the reason why we do sampling. The third one is because of the necessity, the second because of practicality, the third one because of cost effectiveness and the last one because of manageability. So it's all about how you handle small uh, data compared to uh, larger data. So there is two types of sampling, which is the first one is a property sampling. Uh, in property sampling, each unit has equal chances of being selected, however it requires sampling frame. This is to make sure that the sample is representative and unbiased. The second type of sampling is non probability sampling where each unit uh, in does not have equal chances of being included. Uh, it's not require any sampling frame and the sample is formed using either conservation and criteria. So in social sciences, most uh, of the restriction normally using non probability sampling because it's more easier. So we heard about sampling frame in the previous slide, right? So what is sampling frame? So according to Oxford Dictionary in 2002, a sampling frame is a list of items or people forming a population from which a sample is taken. So on screen here is the list names and contact details of 575 lecturers in UITM Laka. So this is an example of sampling frame where you have a list of uh, details of individuals uh, from each of your population. So from this uh, list, you can use to extract uh, samples from it and also you can use to uh, apply the probability sampling. So as a summary for uh, this uh, part, the first step that Ahmad and Nina and other researchers need to do is 
you need to decide on the research objective and research question. Secondly, you need to decide on the population. So in Ahmad in the case, uh, there a population would be all 575 lecturers in your IT and uh, The third step is you need to decide on sample size. So based on the level and teaching token that we have used, uh, we need 234 lecturers in your IT and 